Hello and welcome to Australia in Space TV. My name's Chris Cubbage, I'm the Executive Editor with My Security Media. We're at the Andy Thomas Space Foundation's 14th Australian Space Forum in Adelaide. Uh, we're here with Mikhail Azevkin. He is the CEO and founder of Ant61. Mikhail, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, you are, have a very interesting company and uh, sounds really, really cool. You build robots that fix satellites, right? That's that right? right, yeah. Okay, well talk us into more about your background actually I think might be interesting but yeah about the company as well and where you're at. Yeah sure um, so you know there are a lot of satellites out there and we sort of don't think about them yeah uh, but they actually do a lot of uh, important things like of uh, they tr help us to manage like floods and bushfires and and if some of them break down then we have to launch a new one yep. and it costs hundreds of millions so we decided, why don't we just go and repair them for like 10% of that? Okay. And that's the company. So what do you do? You put another satellite and come up next to it and the robot goes over onto their satellite? Yeah, so ah. robots are quite small and nimble. They dock to a satellite and yes. they get the robotic arms that are ready and they like Got it. open it up, swap batteries. Nice. Maybe you have a nice like satellite that looks at Earth and you want to swap a camera, but you don't want to swap the whole satellite. Yes. You just go and swap the camera and boom, you have a new satellite. So where is, where's the satellite technology is, they should be thinking about this when they build their own satellites and, yeah. and launch them. Do they understand how they can be sort of updated or uh, you know, have a, a robotic mechanic come along and, and change things? Do you have to do all that pre-programming on Earth before you send it on a mission? Mm -hmm. How does that, or you do it literally like a remote operation and you can move your robotic arms remotely? Yeah, so what we, what we do is the robots are semi-autonomous so we give them like high level commands, say like undo that screw or like yes. disconnect that wire. Yeah. And they will then control that millimeter by millimeter on orbit. Um, that's much safer than, you know, controlling every move from Earth. Yeah. Because it is a delay, delay in the signal and, yeah. and these sort yes. of things. And sometimes they are in orbit, so it may not have a stable connection with the ground station right. and, and then what. So yeah, um, but that's an interesting point you raised about like, the satellites actually not being built to be repaired because yeah. that capability just didn't exist. It's just a completely new thing. Yeah. And satellite operators now, um, including Australian ones, are currently working on new satellite designs that would allow us to repair them like, and replace components easily. Yeah. But the existing ones need a little bit more work and exploration and yeah. figuring out what's the best way to do that. Because obviously things like with optics always improving or any yeah. other payload that they have yeah. should hopefully just be a simple yeah, turn, just turn and screw, screw that plug take and it play, out, right? Kind of USB, yeah. yeah. Easier yeah. said than done? Yeah, I think um, maybe in 10 years there will be more yeah. satellites that are very easy to repair. Yeah. Uh, but we are targeting primarily satellites like um, you know, communication satellites, for example, that Optus is using, yeah. very big ones, like the size of your bathroom, roughly. And yeah, these are not built for repair, but they are big and it's a bit easier to get into them. Yeah. It's a small and cheap one that are so packed that you can't repair. Yeah, it's you just, can't take stuff out of it's that. It's really difficult. Yeah, so we're more looking at the bigger ones. Yeah. So is this like uh, MEO and GEO satellites or are you talking about low Earth as well? Yeah, I think when it comes to, when it comes to repair, I think it's more GEO, yep. uh, geostationary ones. Um, especially because when you have the satellites hovering, you want to keep that spot. Uh, yeah. It's very hard to come by. There are not many spots available. If you have like a, if satellite dies there, it just stays there. Yeah. And you can't use that spot. So it makes sense to repair them. In low Earth orbit, we have another um, business case where, uh, let's say someone builds a constellation, let's say Fleet wants to have a constellation, but what if some satellites, uh, that happened to OneWeb actually recently, one satellite just broke down in orbit and just sits there. But they want that orbit for their constellation to work. Yeah. So they want like a bulldozer to come there and just do orbit that. <laughs> and that's very easy. So that's are you much doing that as well? Re we're re returning and going and grabbing a satellite and bringing it back or yeah, one of changing the things, it's Yeah, orbit. when it comes to low Earth orbit, that's probably our biggest market. Yeah. Uh, just get, getting these satellites and, you know, moving them to orbit and burning so together burning up, with them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what's the docking? process, mag magnetics or literally a grabbing and a grabbing them with a claw, yeah. how, how do you attach yourself to a satellite? Yeah, well probably you've seen the exhibition downstairs, we have a docking robot there. Uh, this one is using docking port, that's a standard port yeah. uh, designed by Lockheed Martin and many satellites uh, currently have and will have that port. 
Uh, for bigger satellites that didn't have that port, we just have to use multiple robotic arms to just grab on corners. Nice. Usually these satellites are very like cube, cubic shape kind of looking. Yeah, yeah. So there are corners we can uh, attach to. But yeah, definitely you need to dock before you can manipulate with it. You need to sort of form one rigid body with the satellite yeah. to then go and try to uh, and work do, on it. And does the sort of the docking satellite have autonomy in terms of its tracking? Once it's locked onto that satellite, mm. it'll come in and attach itself. There's no human interaction or requirements for that? We still require, we are required to sort of look over it because, um, yeah, otherwise we wouldn't get a space permit. Yeah. Um, but essentially what it's doing, it's looking at the satellite, it's estimating uh, because if it's out of control, it will be tumbling, like rotating in a random way. We need to uh, look at how exactly it's rotating so we match that rotation. Right. And then we approach it. Very good. What's your, this is your company. What's, what's your background? How have you found yourself in this role? Yeah, so, well, I've been in space probably as long as I can remember myself. <laughs> good. Uh, my grandfather designed first lunar rovers. Right. Uh, Lunar Hod, don't know if you've heard about that one. And yeah, I worked for space agencies, uh, worked for robotics companies, did some AI. Um, yeah, and then I always had this idea that one day I want to build a company who has robots on the moon and the robots need to arrive first and wait for humans to come there because when humans arrive, they need some build stuff. That's you know? right. And our robots will be already there and yeah. we'll be ready to, you know, build some water refinement, nice. some habitats, things like that. So you have that vision and uh, many of us do have that vision. What's your sort of outlook? How long do you think that's going to take us? Mm. Or and are you encouraged by the current progress that we're making? Well, definitely the new space race helps a lot yes. uh, to kind of uh, reinforce that vision. Uh, we think that um, the customers on the moon will be maybe, we may be seven, eight years away from actually someone being interested in paying money to build stuff on the moon yeah there needs to be the whole supply chain built yeah so but in orbit yeah we can probably start making good money in like five years okay and it does seem very long journey but in space five years is like a moment Fair enough yeah. and and the econ economics changes uh, a lot in that period of time as well yeah, yeah. So we hope that space race will continue. We hope that more players will actually join on yes. the space race. So we'll fuel this new space economy. Uh, and Ant 61, anything on the name? What, what, where's that from? Yeah, so 61 is the year when my grandfather sent uh, first nice. to space. And Ant is from Ants, from actual, like, because Ants are collaborative. Yes. They're versatile. They can do a lot of things. They can work together, just like our robots. Yeah, right. They work together. They can do a lot of different things. And they're very nimble, very dexterous. And they have some kind of hive mind. And where can we find out more information? Uh, there's ant61.com. Beautiful. There's a lot of stuff in there. Well, Mikhail, thank you so much for your time on Australia in Space TV. Great story. Thank you. Thank you very much.